the 2017 Cadillac XTS Platinum V Sport. And today I'm going to show you guys why this is a very comfortable but sporty sedan. So something I really like about the XTS, I think it has a really unique appearance. I just like how rounded it looks in the front. It kind of continues over to the roof line and then on the back. And the window even looks in the back real sleek and flat. I think it looks sporty but also really interesting at the same time. It'll probably age really well and I think it just looks unique. Something I really like about modern Cadillacs is that they kind of have their own style. You know how they used to be known for like their big tail fins and stuff like that? I think they kind of had a little evolution and put that same kind of a style into their tail lights. I think they look really interesting and unique at night, just kind of strips, and I think they look nice. And the headlights also have that too, with the LED strips running in the front of them. I think it really makes them look, look bold and they stand out in the daytime. You can tell it's a Cadillac, and I'm really glad they've been consistent about that throughout their entire lineup. Very interesting look, and I'm glad Cadillac does it. Now something I've always liked about Cadillacs is that they're generally really bold. I really like that about them. And this XTS stands out from the crowd, I'd say, just because of this extra chrome on the grill. The platinum trim gets extra chrome, and I think it really makes it pop, just especially with the black paint. It's a fantastic looking chrome grill, and I just love the way it looks. Now something you may have noticed while looking at the front of the car is that the Cadillac logo is not really a logo at all. It's almost like a sticker. It's really flat and kind of smooth. And the reason for that is that the radar system for the adaptive cruise control is behind it so it can send a signal through and see cars ahead of you. A neat feature with the headlights is that when you unlock the car, they actually move side to side to either help you find the car or just to show off a little bit. It's kind of neat how they do that. Hopefully you'll be able to see. Pretty cool. So something that's really interesting is that there isn't really much badging on this car. I mean, it says XTS here, all-wheel drive, and it has the V-Sport logo over on that side of the car. But looking around the car, there isn't anything on the side, on the front of the car. There's just nothing else. It's besides here, this is the only place you can tell if this is an XTS, a V-Sport, or if it's all-wheel drive or not. Again, looking at the back of the car, I really like how Cadillac has done this. They've kind of integrated the third brake light as a spoiler. It's kind of like a nice lip over the car that makes it look kind of aggressive and it's actually kind of smart that they added that just to give it a really good sporty but luxurious appearance. To make filling up your car easy, there's actually no cap you have to mess with. You don't have to screw and unscrew stuff or put it on here. You just put in the nozzle and take it right back out once you're done filling. So of course this is a V-Sport and that's kind of an interesting package. It's kind of like a sport package but not quite a full-on extreme track package like the V V's are with Cadillacs. It gets you really neat stuff though, like Brembo brakes in the front, which will help the, stop the car faster in sporty conditions. It has tougher uh, suspension system, and it even has more horsepower to get the car going quicker. Now taking a look under the hood of the XTS Platinum V Sport, we can see the 3.6 liter V6 twin turbo engine. And in the base level Cadillac, this will make about 304 horsepower and 264 pound feet of torque. But if you opt for the V Sport package, you'll actually bump those numbers up to over 410 horsepower and over 369 pound-feet of torque. It's really an impressive uh, jump in figures there and it'll make the car, of course, much quicker than the base level. Very, very impressive numbers from Cadillac. Now, as far as mileage goes, the Platinum V Sport is rated about 16 city and 24 highway. We've actually found to get a little bit better than that, at least on the highway. Uh, going 77 miles per hour on the interstate, we've actually gotten up to 27 even sometimes better than that. It's, it's really actually more, I think, more efficient than what they say, but it's been very, very efficient for us and a good, good engine. All right, I'm gonna start up the car and let you guys listen to the exhaust and the beautiful note that it makes. Now taking a look at the keyless entry fob here, <laughs> if you saw any of my older videos, you can tell that Cadillac has certainly improved on their uh, key fobs. This one has real metal and actual rubber. It just has a real nice feel to it. It actually has a good amount of weight. It just really feels very, very premium. I, I give Cadillac a lot of credit for using this. It's, it's fantastic. But taking a look at the buttons, not too much going on here. There's an unlock lock. You can auto start your car, open trunk, or uh, do your panic button here. There's even a little uh, switch here, a little, little uh, button you can press which will get out an actual key for, uh, for you to use if your battery ever dies. Keyless entry isn't exactly the newest of technologies. It's been out for quite some time now, but it's new for me and I absolutely love it. It's really easy. I can just keep the key fob in my pocket and to get into this Cadillac, all I have to do, press that button on the handle and the door is open. 
very easy to use. And when I'm done, hit the lock, doors lock again. A feature that I really find convenient on these modern Cadillacs is that the handles actually have lights in them, that LED strip to help you see at nighttime and where to grab and it helps the car stand out. I think it's a great feature, really convenient, and it's neat that Cadillac does that. If you do have your XTS and your key fob dies, you can still get into the car. This plastic piece will come off of the handle if you uh, put your little key from your actual key fob underneath it, pop it off and you can use that key to get in. You can still start it by opening up the center console here and there's a plastic slot there where you'll put your key fob, your dead key fob into and it'll sense that it's there and you'll be able to use the push button start to start your car. So taking a look at the inside of the car now, it's just absolutely beautiful. Cadillac has really done a fantastic job of using brilliant materials inside their car such as real wood on the doors and even on the dashboard, leather everywhere including on the dashboard of course, armrests, stuff like that and even on the side panels. And it seems like some of this stuff is harder, but it actually still has a nice soft touch to it. And this metal in lots of different places, good chrome trim. It's really amazing to seeing the improvement that Cadillac has made even in the past 10 years. It's nothing like a Cadillac that I've seen 10 years ago. It's just impressive how much work Cadillac has made to make a real premium and luxury uh, interior that can really best even some of the German cars. It's really fantastic. And I give Cadillac a lot of credit for making a very nice interior. So being the driver of a Cadillac XTS Platinum, it's very, very comfortable. Of course, you have normal standard seat controls here on the side. You can, of course, adjust the back or move forwards and backwards like normal. But there are other controls which are really, really nice. There are controls here, of course, for lumbar and, and uh, massage features that the car has, like roll and knead and anti-fatigue even. And once you set your own massage function with these uh, levers here, you can actually press this button and it'll automatically start the massage without even having to go through all the different things to start one yourself. So it'll remember what massage you had on last and it'll just press that button, turn it on and off. So besides the massaging functions and the ways to adjust the bolsters and all that other stuff, there are other ways for you to get comfortable in these seats and that includes this little adjustment here in the front. If you have longer or shorter legs, you can move the uh, seat padding forwards or backwards or even the headrest, of course, moves up and down or it can move forwards and backwards. So you can really find just the right spot to really get nice and comfortable because these seats really do have really, really nice bolsters that aren't too heavy, but they're not too soft. So they kind of feel like a nice hug. And they really kind of bring you into the seat and feel comfortable. So a really good feature that this car has for safety and just convenience is a heads up display. You have controls here. You can adjust how high it is or low. You can also adjust its brightness with these buttons here too. You also have an info button and that'll kind of show different things such as the speed limit, RPMs, your uh, navigation, and even stuff like Bluetooth and radio stuff like that. So it'll, it's actually very convenient as far as showing you different things. And you don't have to look down at your uh, gauge cluster to see this stuff so it's safer and it's just a really nice place to look. So this Cadillac has a lot of features that are automatic and kind of taking different things away from the driver to help keep them from being distracted. And one of those things is actually the high beams. It has intelligent uh, lights and it can actually turn on and off the high beams when, it, when either a car is in front of you coming towards you or even if they're going away from you, it can actually sense the tail lights and know, oh, okay, I gotta dim the lights. And once either the headlights or taillights go away, it'll automatically turn on the high beams again and then you'll be able to see clearly without having to press any buttons. Now the door, let's take a look at it. You have different kind of memory seats, which is kind of what you'd expect. You have two person memory, and of course an exit button and a set button. You can do that stuff to adjust your memory settings and exit settings. And you have all four windows are automatic up and down, which is a very nice feature. And taking a look at the passenger door, they even have memory seats as well, which is really neat. Um, you have two person memory over there as well as an exit feature. Now taking a closer look at the steering wheel, I think it's a really, really nice design. I think it looks beautiful. It feels nice in the hands, good wood trim, chrome as well and leather. It feels very nice. And I am a huge fan of the black plastic. I think it looks very neat. And although the buttons may look kind of busy, there's a lot of stuff there. It's actually really simple and intuitive. Um, on the left side of the steering wheel, you have your different uh, cruise control features and functions like that. And on the right side, you have your select button with adjusting your gauges and other things like that. So it's really interesting how they split up the buttons to make them kind of fit with each other. It's very, very well done by Cadillac. Now, the nice thing about when you start the car is that when you start it, of course, the gauges will do their thing. 
Start off with a cool display. Cadillac Hue will come up on the screen, but as you could probably see, the steering wheel and seat moved automatically to my position, which is really nice. Now, once you arrive at your destination and turn off your car, the cool thing is when you open the door, it'll automatically move your seat and steering wheel to the exit position, and then you'll be able to get out of the car nice and easy. Now, taking a closer look at the gauge cluster, as you can see, it's actually an entire screen. It's actually possible to adjust or change each section of the screen. There's actually three. And as you can tell, by pushing the uh, select button on the right side of the steering wheel, I can move from side to side. And I can go through different functions such as seeing the compass or tripometers. It'll even t show me my uh, gap, speed limits, stuff like that that's actually really neat to see. Average economy, whatnot, tire pressure. It's really incredible how many things you can look at. Then moving into the middle, you actually have different kinds of uh, gauges you can look at. You can adjust to see just a needle. You can see your miles per hour in the center or even the mile power and speed limit. So it's really nice how many features you can have to personalize it. And then at the right side, you see another compass again, Bluetooth, needles, option, stuff like that. Something that's really actually kind of cool and also unique about these Cadillacs is that they have a hidden compartment in the dashboard of your car. Now, I guess it's not just a, comp a compartment, it's also a, um, a wireless charging pad for your phone, but you can fit stuff in there, even plug in your USB device even, there's a nice place there for that. And it even blows cold air through that little compartment so your phone doesn't overheat. So it's really, really a good thought by Cadillac to include that, and I think it's kind of unique that there's a hidden compartment that most people don't know about. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Cadillac Q system. Now I've heard a lot of bad things about the system, at least when it was first introduced, probably about six or seven years ago. But now I think it's much more refined. I found the buttons pretty easy to use. I found maybe even actually harder presses are more responsive and maybe really light presses don't work quite as well. And I guess there are a few things that are annoying with it, such as when I'd use the screen, sometimes I'd accidentally hit the volume slider and it would turn on the radio and adjust the volume when I didn't want to. If Cadillac brought back a knob, which I heard they have in many of their new cars, which is good, um, it would be more refined and much easier to use. But overall, I love the Q system. It's fast, it's pretty responsive with the screen, and it shows lots of interesting things that I really do enjoy. As you can see, there are a lot of different options and different settings you can look at with the Cadillac Q. Of course, with your audio settings phone, you have Apple CarPlay and Andro Android Auto. You have navigation settings, climate controls, and you can actually even look at weather and stuff like that. It's amazing how many stuff they have integrated into their system. Um, you can look at your cameras and different stuff like that. It's really impressive how uh, many different apps you can get and download. And Cadillac has done a good job as far as bringing a lot of different things that you can use in the system. Now, taking a look at the weather section in the Cadillac Q system, you have a lot of different things you can see here. Of course, it'll tell you what the weather is, where you are right now at your location. You can look at the five-day forecasts, or you can even have it show you the weather at your destination, such as if you put a location, say, let's say you're going to New York, it'll give you the weather in New York when you arrive and right now. It's really impressive the kind of stuff that Cadillac has to show you the kind of weather that you'll be expecting on your trips. I really like how the XTS also has a lot of different camera views for you to choose from. There's a camera in the front of the car so you can see where you're parking. Maybe if you're pulling into a spot, you don't hit a uh, curb or maybe, maybe a building if you're parking by a building. You also have a camera in the back as well, which will show you, of course, how close you are to something and it gives you trajectory lines as well. And there's also an interesting top view, which looks like there's a camera on top of the car looking down around you. It's a very nice feature for parking straight into spots or just to see what's around you. Now I can also tell that Cadillac really focused on storage in front of the car. Overall, there's a lot of spaces for you to put stuff. In the center console, it's rather deep. You have a lot of room there. You can also connect your phone through a couple USB ports in there. You can have that stick out through the front and set your phone in this little uh, cubby hole here while you drive, which is really nice. And then in front of the uh, center console, you have a couple little things here. You have one storage area that slides forward where you have a 12 volt outlet and you also have a little coin holder. And behind that, you have two cup holders, which is really nice for uh, whatever you need to put stuff in. So it's a good amount of space. And Cadillac also has good storage in the doors as well. You can fit probably a couple umbrellas in there. It's amazing how deep and how far back it goes into the doors. I'm really impressed by it. And there's plenty of room for whatever else you have there too. And of course, there's the glove box and the little secret storage area. 
you know, I guess when Cadillac designed their glove box, I guess they figured that a normal latch was a little bit too uh, plebeian for <laughs> Cadillac owners. So they have a neat little glove box button, which if you press, the glove box opens right up. But unfortunately, you got to close it yourself. <laughs> kind of neat that Cadillac did that. Now, sitting in the driver's seat of the car, one of the really important things is having good visibility in mirrors. As far as I can tell, I really am impressed by these mirrors. They're pretty large, and they have an interesting shape, and I think they look nice, but I also really like the uh, center mirror here, too. It has a nice frameless design, which looks pretty, and it gives you plenty of space to actually see around and behind you. It's very nice. I do wish that this car did have Cadillac's camera mirror system, which is new on the CT6 and several other of their SUVs, but this car, unfortunately, does not have it, and I really think that's a good feature for visibility, but this does not have it, unfortunately. Now taking a look up at the top of the car here on the roof, there are plenty of controls here, which are pretty simple. They're easy to understand, but there's just a few for lights. You have garage door openers. You also have controls for the uh, panoramic sunroof as well, as well as an automatic cover that'll move by the press of a button and cover the windshield, if you, uh, cover the uh, sunroof, excuse me, if you don't want to see it. A lot of controls there too. It's nicely laid out. To differentiate the platinum trim a little bit, Cadillac added the word platinum here on the door sill and they had it light up at nighttime so you could see it. It's really cool. I like the look of it and it makes it seem really more premium. One of my favorite things about the XTS at nighttime is that it has really neat mood lighting underneath the wood trim and some of the chrome throughout the interior. Even in the back seat, it has some. I really like that. I do wish though that it could maybe change colors and stuff like that. It's not really interchangeable, but I, think, I still think it gives a nice premium and interesting look. Now getting into the back seat of the XTS, I can really tell that Cadillac has paid a lot of attention to the, those in the back seat. They've really made a good executive package for the people in the back of this car. The materials are just as good as in the front. The seats are extremely soft and comfortable. And I also have a lot of radio controls here as well on the center console here. I have a power button to turn on the radio. I can of course adjust the volume and I can even go through my favorite stations that I have preset on the radio. And it even comes with cup holders that automatically come out. Really nice attention to detail, and a lot of stuff you can do back here, which I'm really pleased about. And speaking of the radio controls back here, the sound is really phenomenal. There are 14 Bose speakers in this car, and they're kind of in a good array around the entire car to make a good surround sound for you. They even have speakers in the seats, in the front seats of the car, to really give the driver and passenger a good sound. And I gotta tell you, it's really a fantastic system that can really be adjusted well. You can really go into different adjustments as far as where you want to hear the sound and how you, and how you hear it. It's really fantastic and Cadillac did a good job and Bose to make a very, very nice sounding sound system. Cadillac has also added some nice touches in the back such as sun visors in the door here which clip up here they are unfortunately manual but you know I can kind of expect that. It's still nice to have and I do have a button here for the back as well. There's another sun visor that will go over the back of the uh, car and if you have a driver and if you don't have anyone in the back and if that's up when you put it in reverse that actually lowers it so it doesn't impede your view and then it'll go back up when you put it in back and drive. It's really neat attention to detail that Cadillac thought about. Now Cadillac has also added some nice features such as a heated seat in the back as well as your own climate controls and stuff that you can adjust. You can make that fans blow at your face or your feet or make it do that automatically. It's very nice that they did that. However, I do wish that maybe there was a cooled seat in, ba in the back here. There's only a heated seat. It's still, it's still very nice, but I would wish that Cadillac would have added that. And Cadillac also added a nice big panoramic sunroof to add a lot of natural light into this car. Although it kind of does make the roof a little bit lower, I still feel very comfortable in the back as far as feeling open in the car because of that glass. It's really nice that they have that. Now to open up the trunk, of course, you can use the key fob. So there's a little button under here, a pad you press, opens up for you and it opens up to 18 cubic feet of storage. So it's a good amount. It's actually quite deep for the car. It doesn't seem like it would have that much deep storage, but it does and it has a cargo net here of course for your stuff and uh, underneath it will give you a uh, pump for uh, inflating a tire if it's flat but no spare tire unfortunately not enough room for that. So taking a look at the trunk you can tell that it's very roomy but if you need more space maybe to fit something bigger like a big TV or skis or something there's of course a ski pass through but you can also fold down the seats with the lever inside the car and it will give you a ton more space to fit much bigger stuff into the car. Very very smart for Cadillac to do that. Now, something I'm very sad that this car doesn't have is a trunk pull-down feature, which of course means you got to pull your trunk down yourself. I know it's crazy, but for a Cadillac not to have that, they've had it since 1969 and they got rid of it. I wish that Cadillac would bring it back so you could have a nice pull-down again. It's a great feature and I, I want them to do that. It's a, it's a good feature and I wish they had it. 
All right, so I'm driving the XTS, and uh, I'm very comfortable. You know, the suspension, it's uh, harsher with the uh, V-Sport, but I can, you know, still take this on road trips, I feel like. I feel like it's actually a good car for that. The seats are very comfortable for me. Um, I really enjoy it, actually. It's, it's really incredible. And uh, speaking of the seats, the uh, heated, heated seats, they actually adapt uh, according to what temperature you set in the car. So as you drive, you may notice that the heated seat will maybe go up a level or down, trying to maintain whatever temperature you set. So if you set it at 75, it'll actually keep that temperature in the heated seats, which is really neat, and it'll actually make you a little bit more comfortable. Suck like Lightman. All right. So with the adaptive cruise control, to set that, all you have to do is pull down on the left button on the steering wheel, the center button there, and then it sets it in the uh, display, turns uh, green, it'll actually show you that your cruise control is set, and to adjust, you can either do that by one mile per, mile per hour up or down, or by five miles per hour up and down, and that's by using the same set and resume button in the middle of the steering wheel. It's actually really smart of Cadillac to make it so you can actually adjust the speeds of the uh, uh, cruise control by more than by five miles per hour by more than one so it's a little bit easier just to move up and down if you have to if or you have a speed limit change now while using the adaptive cruise control I'm following a car that green car means that it knows that that van is there I can of course change the gap and bring it closer if I'd like just a really incredible system I can bring it up a little bit more too, to 55 if I wanted and it'll break on its own for the car it's very 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 incredible all right, so I'm gonna show off sport mode a little bit. Now what I have to do to engage sport mode is by pulling back on the shifter, back to the M, and my uh, gauges will change a little bit. I can see what gear the car is in, it'll tell me sport above that. And now I, can, I have the abil ability to use the paddle shifters if I'd like, but as long as I don't touch them, I can keep it in manual if I'd like. But you know, if you decide to use the paddle shifters, you can change the heads up display to show the RPM so you know exactly when to change, or you can look at the gauges too. But when I put it into uh, sport mode, it changes the gearing a little bit and it's a little bit more sport sporty so it knows that you're gonna be doing some more uh, spirited driving. It's just amazing how, how good of a sport sedan this is because I really, just because I can feel the road a good amount, I, I really feel confident as far as what this car can do. I'm, I'm really amazed and going around turns, it feels good. It doesn't, it doesn't really roll too much. Going around curvy roads is a good place for you to use uh, the paddle shifters. I found them to be fairly responsive. They, they are pretty quick, but certainly not instantaneous. The steering is very, very precise. I feel like I kind of know where it's going. I, I can predict where it's pointing and where to go. It's really well designed for this, this kind of driving, if this is what you, you like to do. But um, that's what I love about this car. It can, do, it can do both. It can be comfortable and it can be sporty. So depending on how you feel, you can, you can have a, both of those things at the same time. All right, so I'll give it a quick acceleration here to show you guys how it works. Let me wait for this car to go by, and then I'll uh, hammer starting at about 34 miles per hour. Wow. <laughs> wow. That is really impressive. I'm, I'm amazed. You know, for being a big sedan, it's just amazing how quick it can go. I believe zero to 60 in 6.2 seconds, but you know, it's just, it's, you almost don't expect it. All right, I'll just show you guys zero to 60 real quick. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's amazing how quick it pulls you back just in the first second or two. That's just incredible. Wow. Wow, very impressive. As far as safety goes with the XTS, it's very good. It has, of course, airbags just about everywhere, front airbags, side airbags, it even has knee airbags, believe it or not. And it has traction control, stability track, everything you want as far as those kind of features go. But um, a side blind zone alert, which I really like, and lane keep warning, I guess. It doesn't have lane keep assist. In other words, it doesn't actually uh, turn the steering wheel. And that's kind of a little disheartening. I kind of wish it would have had that. So I'm using adaptive cruise control right now on the highway. And once I set my cruise control, it'll stay at that speed until I come up to another car. And it'll let me know that it detects a car by putting a little green symbol of a vehicle onto the heads up display and then if I need to I can always just turn out of the lane to pass if I come up to them and I can pass I'll do that or it'll just slow down if I don't want to pass and I'll it'll keep tempo with them and it'll continue forward again it's really incredible and it's really easy to tell that this system's working it's just simple to, simple to understand if I hit the brake and turn off the cruise control it'll let me know that I can resume to that speed it'll show still show it on the heads-up display and it'll show it on the gauges as well so it's really easy to use 
it's simple to understand and it's a fantastic feature to have. Side blind zone alert is also a really nice feature. This car has it. And what, what it does is it has sensors on the side of the car and it'll actually light up the mirror yellow in one little spot to tell me that there's a car there. Then I'll know not to change lanes into them. And if I do, it'll probably beep, beep at me to tell me not to. But um, it's a really nice feature to have and it's really easy for uh, keeping your travels safe. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really appreciate the support that you guys have given me, and I hope that you can come back again sometime soon to watch more car reviews, so be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. Thank you.